This video will cover a lot of aspects of the gaming industry, in terms of the jobs available and the levels of the gaming industry. It's kind of a pecking order. The jobs that this video will cover are 3D modeler, animator, artist, audio engineer, designer, scriptwriter, level designer, and localization technician, producer, programmer, and quality assurance tester, but not in that order. I will go through detailed information, including entry requirements to get in that job, and throw a few video clips and pictures in here and there, just to make it look a bit interesting than it already is. I'll also take you through the levels of the gaming industry, team member, leader, management and producer, and show you how to get from being the little guy to the top of the food chain. So to start off with 3D modeling. This job involves creating 3D models and animation. The general salary for a 3D modeler is around £25,000 a year. Other responsibilities for a 3D modeler, apart from 3D models and animations, is also modeling for the websites and creating graphics. The next stage from the 3D modeler is the animator, so that the model can then move and act fluidly, basically like a real person. The model will have all the facial expressions added and all the detail of the face, clothes, possible weaponry, and any items that the character will interact with. They would also create the terrain, buildings, structures, and objects such as cars to go into the environment, and to give it a lifelike look. The 3D modeler would get the ideas from the concept artist, and then create a model based upon that, in as much detail as the concept artist has given them. So the 3D modeler works with the concept artist team, the level design team, and the animation team to create the character, for it then to be put inside the game. The more important entry requirements for a 3D modeler are a keen interest in the computer programs and the ability to handle multiple projects at the same time, as you may be making 3D models for more than one character in the game. The 3D modeling team will work a set amount of office hours as they work closely with the animation and artist team and will use programs that the company will want them to use instead of using their own personal preference for 3D modeling programs. The animator's job is basically what it says on the tin. You animate things to put it simply. The average salary is around £25,000 a year, the same as a 3D modeler. Other responsibilities for the animator are to create 3D and 2D animations, along with the 3D modeler, to animate human and animalistic expressions and to create fluid character movements. It's the animator's job to make the player believe the character is real due to the movements and motions that the character makes. The animator would work with the 3D modeler, the concept art team, and the level design team. This is so the colour scheme and the general feeling and atmosphere of the character fits in with the atmosphere of the environment and of the other characters and objects that the player interacts with. As the player moves without fault, the player becomes a lot more emotionally attached to the character, as we believe it as an actual person going through the experiences the character the player is controlling is going through. This means as a bigger attachment is formed with something we think is real, the player will constantly think about what is going to happen next. This makes a game not only repeatable, but will also mean that the game's company will receive more profit. The animation is, ver is a very vital role in the creation of the video game. The entry requirements for an animator is a degree in art, more than 5 years experience in the gaming industry, and production experience in gaming systems. The animator will work a set amount of hours at the office as they work closer with the 3D modelling team. This means they need to communicate with other departments throughout the company through the game designing process. The artist team creates all the concept art for 3D modelers and animators to bring to life. They do this for all aspects of the game from terrain to characters to interactable objects. The average salary of a concept artist is £61,000 a year, for an experienced artist anyway. The concept artist team need to put in as much detail, whether that's by actually drawing it or by labelling the sketches, so that the 3D model team, who get the finished piece when the concept artist is finished, can make it look as close to the concept artist's idea as possible. There are many different types of artists. There will be a different person for each main character, a different person for each weapon, if applicable, and a different person for each object such as cars, and the list goes on. Other roles that the artist cover are to create high quality 3D and 2D models and to work with the teams made from lead artists, programmers and art directors. While working with the programmers, the artist team will also work with the level designers and the 3D model team. 
It is the artists that originally decipher what all the characters' environments are going to look like, thus immediately creating a general atmosphere for the game. The entry requirements are an education in art, four years in professional gaming, and experience of working with a game engine. The artist will have set office hours and a full term contract with the company, as they will need to work at the office. This of course they work very closely with the 3D modelling team. The audio engineering team make all of the music for the games and the sound assets for the game, which are the sounds that play when a particular thing happens within the game. The audio, the audio engineer earns approximately £95,000 a year. Other roles that the sound engineers perform are to design and implement audio systems, to work with audio technology teams and to work with the programmers. They work with these particular teams to make sure that the music matches the game atmosphere, to make sure the sound matches the player actions, for example, so the explosion happens at the same time the object explodes in the game. The music is arguably one of the most important aspects of the game, as it respects the whole aspect of the game in a song, tune or harmony. As with Assassin's Creed Unity, the song played during the release trailer focused on the assassins that the player controls and also the character that the player interacts with, random civilians fighting in the war and how their lives are affected by this. It tells the story in music. It also shows what target audience the game will have with Batman Arkham Knight, as the music is very deep and dramatic with a lot of explosion sound effects and gunshots in the background. We can clearly tell that this isn't a game for children as violence will be a main part of the game. Another example is The Last of Us. As game engines and gaming systems evolve, music becomes not only more important, but also more challenging as the gaming industry evolves. One of the new features of the PlayStation 4 hardware which you wanted to use was the speaker on the controller. In the game, you're able to toggle the flashlight and listen to your recorders through the controller. We felt this was a more direct feedback for the player to live within that world. So one of the technical improvements we were able to achieve on the PlayStation 4 version of The Last of Us was positional audio in both stereo and headphone environments. This is because the company is trying to find as close to perfection as possible. The entry requirements to be an audio engineer, as I have a degree in computer science or software engineering, and to have two plus years of experience in working in the gaming industry in some way. The audio engineer will have a full term contract with the company and set hours at the office. Not to be confused with a level designer, a designer's main role in a gaming company is to handle all the money and investments and to motivate the team that they control. The average salary for a designer is around £55,000 a year. The other job roles that the designer has to perform is to manage budgets within the department, work schedules for projects so that particular parts of the project are done for a deadline date, so the game doesn't have to be delayed, or if it does for the smallest time possible. However, some gaming companies do like to delay their games, as it means creating more of a hype for the game, which means it gives more people time to know about the game, thus more money is being made. Also, to have immense attention to detail skills, so the game is whole and not lacking in any areas, as this could drop sales if there is a major fault within the game that could be solved before the testing stage. The designer can design the game as a whole, but the level designers create particular levels for the game, whether that's making missions, maps, races, etc. The entry requirements to become a video game designer are to have a degree in video games, computer science, or computer engineering, to have experience in project management, game prototyping, and to be able to integrate video design and technology. The designer will have a full term contract with the company, but not necessarily have regular office hours, as work may need to be completed outside of office hours unofficially. For example, meetings may need to take place with the producers outside of work hours. There are many types of scriptwriters in the gaming industry. The main two are the scriptwriter for the cutscenes, general talk, and what the player's character will say when interacting with other people, whether that be on single player or multiplayer. The other type of scriptwriter is writing the script into the game itself, using script-based programs. The average salary for any kind of scripter is around £50,000 a year. You know, when we talk about scripts, we can go in two different directions. Scripting in the industry can be programming oriented, but for this we're talking about scripting as in the creative process. It's just like writing a script for a movie. 
Um, however, some games are linear like a movie. The story starts and ends in a certain pattern. And some games, uh, depending on the action of the players and what happens, the world is quite open and many different stories can occur and happen. All the roles that a computer scriptwriter performs are working closely with artists and programmers and to script, script gameplay systems. The other roles that a dialogue scriptwriter performs are to create dialogue for each character, working closely with the programming team and other scriptwriters, and to work with the audio team to make sure that the voice not only matches the dialogue and idiolect of the character, but also the area that the character is from, so the voice matches with the other characters that the player interacts with. The script writing is obviously a vital role, as without all the script writers, the characters won't have anything to say, and the game won't even work without the computer script writers. Different companies use different styles of script writing, whether that is varying the accents and idiolect that the character uses, or being more intricate. For example, Nintendo script writers will be a lot different from Infinity World script writers, as the target audience is different, they create different styles of games, and due to the fact that they are based in different countries, so, the general talking style will be parallel to that of the country that the creators of the game is based in. The entry requirements for a computer scriptwriter are a computer science degree, programming or scripting experience, and experience in developing game content. The entry requirements for a dialogue scriptwriter are a degree in the host language, in the host country's first language, more than two years experience in the gaming industry, and experience in character development and general script writing. The script writers can both freelance and work for different companies throughout their career, or work permanently for a company and have a full-term contract, and script all the games that the company create. And you really have to think about the layout and the physical actions of the characters much more than you would. Who are you? But it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it when you see, I think, the quality of, of what comes through with the emotions of the actors. The level designer's main objective is to create maps for the game, building the 3D environment for it then to be put into the game. A level designer's average salary is around £45,000 a year. Other roles that the level designer team carries out, apart from creating maps for the game, are planning maps on paper before creating them on the computer and then transferring them onto the game engine once they have been created on the computer and to play the basic maps to find any obvious faults before giving it to the testers for them to find the small errors. It is important that the maps are created on paper first, as the designers need to know a basic idea of what to create, instead of going straight to the computer stage and making it up as they go along. This is a, this is a vital role, as without the level designers, the game would have a very basic environment, and without any maps, the characters would be interacting with other characters in nothingness. The entry requirements to become a level designer are to have a general enthusiasm for the gaming industry, as without the enthusiasm and passion for creating video games, then the job night might not be done to its best. Also experience in building 3D environments, the ability to collaborate with other team members, and arguably the most important yet, you must have a high degree of creativity. This is because players don't want to be playing the same maps over and over again. They want creativity and imagination put into the maps, so they are surprised with something they wouldn't normally expect to be in there. It needs to be a good surprise though, and a good quality to the map too, or the designer who put it in there may get a bad reputation for making stupid mistakes. The level designers will work set office hours as they will need to work in the main headquarters, as they will need to work close with other departments throughout the company. The localization of technician is a very big job, and covers a lot of different people in a lot of different countries, normally covering multiple continents. This is because the localization technician needs to make sure that the game is correct and appropriate for a particular country. This means that the salary of a localization technician can vary, as they are not needed all the time, and are needed by different companies at different times. This means that they will work irregular hours, as some of the times they won't even be working if a games company doesn't approach them to work, or they could work permanently for a company and test every game for a particular area. As a result of this, the salary can vary from very high to very low, depending on how successful the game is and how large the business is. The other roles that the localization technician carries out are proofreading, finding and reporting bugs, working in large teams to find faults with the game for that area, 
and to play various genres of games and games created by various companies. If the company that created the game is American, then it is vital that they have localization technicians in places where English isn't a first language, as they will need to translate the dialogue. It is the localization technician's job to make sure that all the dialogue is correct. The game may also need to be altered depending on what area it is to be sold. For example, if the game is sold in Korea, and it's very offensive to Koreans, then it could create real life problems ranging from the game being banned in particular areas to even wars if the Korean government doesn't like how the game represents the country and her citizens. The entry requirements to be a localization technician are to have a keen interest in video games and to be able to speak the first language of the country that they are testing it for. For example, they will have to speak fluent Mexican if they are testing the game for Mexico. The programmer basically creates the engine on the game engine itself, and programs the game into the system. The average annual salary for the programmer is around £60,000 a year. All the roles that the programmer carries out are creating all the AI, which stands for Artificial Intelligence, which is how the virtual characters in the game respond and react to the player's actions. Also animation, controlling the cameras and deciding where the camera angle will go creating the gameplay and working with the gameplay systems and the game engines. The programmer is one of the most vital roles, as it is their job to collect all the resources that every department has created and put them all together to create a game. In my own personal opinion, the AI animation as it needs to be as lifelike as possible, and if it isn't, then that could affect not only the player's experience, but also sales of the game as if the game gets a bad reputation for being not as realistic as possible, especially now we have come to a point where we aren't limited by technology, and we can make video games extremely lifelike, people won't buy the game. This could result in the company losing profit, and in the worst situation, closing down. The entry requirements for being a programmer are to have a high degree in computer science, to have more than one year's experience working in the gaming industry, and to be credited on a shipped AAA game, which means a game that has been made of the highest quality and the highest budget as possible with the company that has made it. The programmer will have general office hours as they will need to work in the main headquarters of the game company and will have a fixed term contract. The quality assurance tester, or more commonly known as a simple video game tester, simply tests the game. It's a lot of people's dream to be a video game tester, but the truth is quite different to what the general feel about it is. The average salary for a video game tester is £21,000 a year, which is a lot less than what some people believe it to be. Other roles that the quality assurance tester operates Every. are find bugs in the game and then reporting them to the games company, preventing mistakes from happening within the game, and to deliver p possible gaming solutions to the company. It is a vital role in the creation of the game, however, as the testers need to test every aspect of the game, over and over again. One tester will get 30 seconds of the game, whether it be story, a mission, a race, multiplayer mission, any part of the game, and they will have to test it for months on end. Imagine what in watching 30 seconds of a film every day for 6 months. That's what a quality assurance tester has to do, but with a video game. They don't get a choice in what game they test as a company will want them to work and give them a game to play. So if they don't like the game, then it's tough, and they have to play it no matter what their opinion on the game is. Not that I'm trying to sway you away from the game's testing area. The very popular company IGN told the truth of being a quality assurance tester, saying it was an unfair and tiring job, as games testers could end up working 18 hours in one day. The tester is irregular hours, as they can work from home, so don't have a boss forcing them to work, but could get a bad reputation if they don't complete the work they have to do for the company hiring them. The entry requirements to be a quality assurance tester are to have an enthusiasm in video games, to have a general knowledge of the gaming industry, and to have experience in using and the ability of working in teams. So the levels, team member, 
A team member is at the bottom of the company. No one works for a team member. This means they get paid the least. They basically do what they're told to do by the team leader or whatever the department they work for. For example, in the 3D modeling department, they would do their part of the 3D modeling in the game. Team leader. A team leader is the head of the team members. They work alongside them, but also communicates with the management team to discuss how the game is coming along and what part of the project the team is currently working on. Management. The manager encourages slash disciplines the team and makes sure the team meets final deadlines so projects are finished for a particular day. The management communicates with the producer and the team and team leader. Basically, he's the middleman. They work for the producer, but the team works for him. Producer. The producer handles all the money and makes sure that the game is profitable before it is released. They meet with the manager to discuss future plans. The producer is the highest person in a company. Other roles that the producers carry out include working with senior management, support, and lead senior teams and maintaining and tracking schedules while motivating teams to make sure targets are met for the deadline day, earning around £80,000 a year. Entry requirements for a producer are a bachelor's degree in business, marketing or games design, more than 8 years experience, to be able to communicate effectively between multiple departments, scripting experience and a general enthusiasm for video games. The associate producer or the producer and the executive producer are all like project managers. So they're responsible for keeping uh, the development schedules on, on track, the budgets on track, making sure the assets are being delivered correctly, and coordinating everything with all of the uh, departments, marketing, sales, uh, anything else that's happening uh, to make that game come together at the end. The levels in games design all depend on how many years you have spent working in the gaming industry. It is very rare that someone will apply straight for the producer spot, as they may not have any experience in the gaming industry. This means they might not understand any protocols, good companies to go for get to create a game, or simply the stages that need to happen before the game can be released. It's basically like the evolutionary stage. The big fish are always stronger and more important than the little fish, but without the little fish, the big fish won't be able to survive. This shows that every role in the gaming industry is vital to the game's development and even one, if one of the stages are rushed or overlooked then it could make the difference between the game being a success or a failure.